Eurobike 2021 uh, is the last one. So let's go and find out all the cool stuff, shall we? We already know that Shimano make excellent SPD shoes, but flat pedal shoes, they make a big variety. Now where they differentiate between other brands is they have different sole styles for different forms of riding, but what I've just noticed is a completely new approach. They're calling this Ultrad, and that is seriously soft. Like this might be the sole we've been waiting for from Shimano. I mean, as you can see, the shoe comes in a couple of different options. So these are the GR9s. They've got the little sock booty on them to stop some sort of debris and trail stuff getting into the shoe. They've got nice laces. It's got a nice thin upper. You can feel the padding in here, but it's definitely a sort of material that won't be absorbent to water. And then that sole, that is the stickiest rubber I've felt on Shimano stuff. So that could be an absolute winner. I've got to say, I mean, I'm normally a black sneaker sort of person, but they look rad. They kind of remind me of the old specialized Taj Mahalit shoes. Anyone remember those? These definitely look cooler though. It can be easy to think that brands like Shimano are just about trying to progress 12 speed, give you more electronic shifting, things like that. But actually, they're more interested as well in offering long-term durability to riders. So this is the new Link Glide system and it's available in 10 and 11 speed. And the whole point is it's far more durable. So that's gonna be great for people that ride e-bikes, great for people that mash miles. Now the whole point is it's gonna shift just as well as anything else out there and just offer you way more bang for the buck. I love the fact that Shimano do this. They really are, as far as budget goes, the absolute kings of transmission. Now the thing with Link Glide versus Hyperglide and other systems available on the market is yes, ultimately it's a much heavier cassette, but it's heavier for a reason. There is more material here on each of the teeth, so they will last longer. And I actually say, even written here, they say that Link Glide is three times more durable than Hyperglide. Now to put that into perspective, if you're riding a Hyperglide SLS cassette, you're riding it in the worst possible conditions and you're changing the chain at the correct times. You get one to last a couple of years. So there's potential. You can make one of these last a lot longer if you ride them correctly. I just love the fact that they're really trying to look after the consumer here. Yes, they're trying to make money by selling cassettes, but that is for people that go through gear. Wicked stuff from Shimano. When you're going around shows as big as Eurobike, you're gonna see a bunch of brands you've never heard of, but every now and then something surprises you. So this brand just won. It almost looks like a fully featured brand featuring everything from enduro helmets, as you can see up the top there, eyewear, goggles, carbon fiber, full face helmets, protection. They seem to have pretty much everything. It looks like a really good brand and I've never even heard of them. Check it out. Another brand I've never even heard of, Craft Stuff. But look at it, I th this one really drew my eye. I mean, there's a really nice trail bike just behind you there, but gotta say, the clean lines on this, that, that really nice rigid fork. I know I'm a suspension believer, but this almost looks like what I would class as a gravel bike, an adventure bike, a bike packing bike. I, I love it, I think it's really nice. Not sure about the Oxo Cube as a head tube, but the whole overall look of the bike, the, the sort of olive green, it just does it for me. That's, that is really nice. Although I would probably put SRAM access just to get rid of one more cable there, so you've only got the two. Super neat and tidy with the integrated cockpit on there. Lovely. Really nice bike. Can't believe I've never heard of them. So this really is something special. So this is a BMC using Suntour suspension. As you can see by the name on it, this is Tom Pickock's bike. Olympic champion Tom Pickock. I mean, feel pretty privileged actually to be in front of the bike, being able to touch it, get hands on with it. And as you can see by the state of the cassette, it has been heavily ridden. It's his bike. Now there's a number of cool things on this bike to start with. So firstly, you've got the integrated dropper post built into the frame design itself. And it also has the, the self up feature. On the opposite side here, on the non-drive side, there's a little valve at the bottom there where the mechanic can put an amount of pressure in and a post can automatically go down and up. So it's not just a post that goes up and you have to use your weight to drop it. Really intelligent system. It's got the Silverton wheels from Syncros on here. Incredibly light, carbon spokes, one piece with the hub. Insane tech on the wheels. There's also prototype tires from Continental on here, the Prover tarps. And as you can see, it says 150 on the side. Now, I don't know this, but I'd speculate the fact that they're 150 TPI, so an insanely thin casing. And just by feeling them with my nails, they feel like incredibly thin, which means they're gonna roll incredibly fast. Might be a problem for some racers, but not for Tom Pickock. He's very light on the bike, so seems to work for him. But probably the biggest thing on this bike is what appears to be here and here and joined together. Yeah, electronic shock, electronic suspension. 
Something I'd assume that's a bit like the live suspension system from Fox in that it's going to adapt to what Tom's doing on the bike and it's going to offer a lockout platform when he's climbing and it's going to open up when he's descending. As you can see on the handlebars, the only controls are for the shifter and for that dropper post. There's nothing for the suspension. So this is an electronic system from Suntour that we've not yet seen. Now at some point I will learn more about this, they'll tell us more. They've been a little bit cagey so far, but it's super cool to see this race bike here in the flesh. Without a doubt, this has to be the coolest bike I've seen here at Eurobike. It's just amazing to think what this bike has done. Now they've always been on the mountain bike scene, but in more recent years, probably like the last four or five years, Kenda have really started making some really aggressive tires again. Check this one out, this one's the Grand Mudder. That thing just looks like it would hook up amazingly in anywhere like deep loam, anywhere it's really got a cut in and fine traction. Seriously aggressive tyre, and that's actually got quite a lot of support on there as well. Uh, nice soft side knobbles though, so they're not going to fold over too badly. Seriously really good tyre, so you've got a Hellcat, you've got the pinner, you've even got a nice low stack height fast rolling tyre. So I guess this one, Hell Diver and a pinner, you'd run them rear and front as a combination. So the Helldiver perhaps looks a little bit more aggressive than what we've seen from WTB and Schwalbe. So Schwalbe have got a Rock Razor, WTB have got the uh, Riddler, <laughs> nearly forgot that one then. This one's got seriously aggressive side knobs, nice low stack height, but they're a little bit bigger. So actually you probably get a bit more traction out of that. That looks like a great rear tire. Then you've got the Regolith Pro, you've got various Tanwall style cross country tires here. You've even got old school style white, well, Blackpool white tyres. Never seen that look before. Seemingly, they're starting to have a bit of a range that's kind of suiting all types of mountain biker. And dare I say it, they seem to have more in their ranges than some of the bigger players do. I think Kenda are actually on their way up as far as mountain bike tyres go. Recently, we made a video with Joe from Starling Cycles talking about gearboxes and their effectiveness on mountain bikes and why some brands may or may not be starting to use them. Now, the two brands we referred to were Effie Gear and Pinion. Now Nikolai has famously been involved using a lot of the pinion systems on their bikes for some time. But I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that this one has the Gates belt drive system on here as well. So as well as having the gearbox internal system on the bike that does away completely with the derailleur, we're also doing away with the chain by having the carbon belt drive system on here. Now it's supposed to be a very effective system, but more importantly, almost completely maintenance free. As you can see by this bike here that looks like it's been ridden on our local trails at GMBN. Doesn't look like you need to do much to it, just keep trekking through the winter. Personally, I've not ridden one of these. I've ridden a pinion system, I've now ridden Effie gear. I've not ridden the Gates belt drive system, but I'm dead keen to give it a try because actually as far as winter and bad conditions riding goes, there's a lot to be said for not having to look after your bike. All right, I know it's an e-bike, that's definitely Steve Jones turf but this has the Intend hover shock and the Intend inverted fork on there. I've not actually seen these in the flesh before and they're just mind-blowingly gorgeous. I've always had a thing for inverted forks. I've had a Dorado before, I've had a Shiver from Marzocchi, I've had the Shiver single crown, but nothing was ever actually that good. I think it was just a, the romantic idea of an inverted fork, but these are supposed to be really, really good. Uh, at some point, I want to get my hands on some just to try them out, just to feel for myself. I, I reckon that is probably my favourite looking suspension fork in mountain biking at the moment. I think that is just something special. Now, rumour has it, the rear shock itself is one of the most supple action things you can get in mountain biking. It's supposed to have an incredibly supple and adjustable action on them. Can't really comment on that because I've not tried it, but um, it's definitely something special looking, that's for sure. So in case you're wondering about the whole inverted thing and the right way up, the wrong way up fork, let me just uh, spell this out again. So we did have this recently on a tech show, but in case you missed it, this is an inverted fork, but in the motorcycle world, technically, it's the correct way up. They've always been this way. Now, reasons for this design being good over what we currently have are the fact you have the bigger part of the fork, which is the slider, this is the stanchion, flip that for normal way up. You've got a bigger part of the fork at the top. So because of that, you've got a bigger surface to clamp. You've got the four and a half strength under braking. On a motorcycle, you need all that strength and stiffness for the braking. And of course, the other thing that's really important is on an oil bath fork like you would get in the motorcycle world, the seals have oil on them consistently. So the action of the fork arguably is a bit better. The problem on a mountain bike for having this design is the clamping system down the bottom is much smaller than it is on a motorbike. So it can be difficult to get the steering nice and stiff without overbuilding the fork. Now, apparently Intend have managed to get this right, but many manufacturers have tried and not managed to do that. And let's face it, 
They do look amazing, but there are some drawbacks to it. Okay? There will be weight, there will be flex. You can't fit a proper mud guard on these sorts of forks. Whereas on the regular forks that we all know and love, they're much cheaper to produce because of the fact they can be produced in such huge quantities. They're stiff, they're light, they tick all the boxes. But I've got to say, I will always prefer the look of these. At the moment, we're seeing a massive resurgence in the amount of development that's going on with cross-country racing. We're seeing a lot of the bikes have upped rear travel, that new Canyon Lux Trail. It's gone up to 110 on the rear, 120 on the front. We've just seen the new Scott bike go up to 120 front and rear, and they're all being geared up for 2.4 inch tires like these. I can't believe that this is a 2.4 inch race tire. It looks like a free ride tire. Super light carcass, it's called the Wicked Wheel, and they do an e-bike certified version. I mean, look at the volume of the thing. This is for cross country racing. Just think what is going on in cross country. It's seriously exciting at the moment without losing touch of the fact that bikes are super lightweight. They're just becoming more capable like we've always wanted, but retaining that race thoroughbred feel about them. I mean, it's a tan wall tire. It's got an Evo casing on there. It's good soft rubber, but not too soft that you're gonna keep it riding slowly. And of course, like I said, they do an e-bike certified model in this as well. There's also a bit of a resurgence for the inner tube happening at the moment. Let's face it, not everyone wants to run tubeless. And sometimes actually running a tube like these ones, which are made from aerothane, are actually lighter to a degree. And apparently they're more puncture resistant as well. So you have seen in the past inner tubes from companies like Tubalito doing it, but now Schwab are in on the action. And this is a seriously light inner tube. The 27 and a half, 83 grams. That is insane, if that floats your boat. Many of you will know Trick Stuff brakes. They make the incredibly powerful Maxima brakes. Uh, we've seen them on G. Atherton's personal bike when he came to visit us a while back, and they are like vice-like. And now, if you ride a gravel bike, you can have some of the same action. Now they're making these C22 calipers that are compatible with both Shimano and SRAM. They essentially just have a different system on the inside, different seals to cope with mineral and dot fluid there. And they offer more power, but just look at that. That is what you want if you have to ride a gravel bike, surely. That is absolutely stunning. Now, apparently on the Shimano systems, uh, not including the brand new uh, Dura A setup, they do offer a bit more power, uh, but on the SRAM system, notably more power. So uh, interesting stuff there to test out. If you want some seriously good brakes, I know you mountain bikers love your good brakes. Trick stuff, got to be one of the go-tos these days, I reckon. Oh, well, there we go. Actually, I think we hunted out some pretty cool stuff. I have to say though, the coolest thing for me had to be Pickock's bike. I mean, I'm a fan of the BMC bikes anyway, but to see that electronic prototype stuff from Suntour, I reckon they're onto something. Uh, what did you think was uh, the best thing we saw on this video? Let us know in those comments underneath, and we'll see you in the next one later this week.